Hello and welcome to Nightline. I'm Raymond Go. News making the headlines. Op Salama campaign to be given fresher approach. And government does not incur any cost in the acquisition of 12 surveillance drones from the U.S. Good morning. The Op Salamat campaign during the festive seasons needs to be enhanced with a fresher approach. Home Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin said about 13,000 accident cases had been reported so far during the Op Salamat campaign this year. He said this seems to show that the road safety campaign to reduce accidents has not produced the desired results. Tan Sri Muhyiddin said accidents still happened, probably because people wanted to return to their hometowns fast. He said this matter should be given serious attention by road users to avoid such things from happening. Setakat sekarang ini pun hampir 140 uh, lebih bilangan yang telah uh, maut. Uh, dan ini satu yang kita pandang serius uh, tentulah merugikan negara kerana yang telah berkemalangan apalagi maut itu adalah mereka-mereka yang saya fikir mungkin uh, boleh memberikan banyak apa orang kata khidmat kepada negara jadi negara rugi apalagi keluarga akan menghadapi pelbagai-bagai masalah yang lain he said the op selamat which has been in operation for many years may not be effective anymore this is in view that some road users tend to be selfish when on the road he therefore said related agencies should find a fresher approach to educate road users Kempen keselamatan jalan raya antara kempen yang paling lama. Saya ingat sejak saya kecil pun dah ada kempen keselamatan jalan raya. Kemudian itu kita didik dan bimbing anak-anak di sekolah tentang soal keselamatan jalan raya. Tapi malangnya masih lagi berlaku, lebih lagi bilangan kenderaan di atas jalan raya semakin besar bilangan. Negara mungkin bertambah mewah, rakyat lebih mudah memiliki kenderaan sendiri ataupun yang lain-lain lagi. Uh, jadi apapun uh, usaha untuk menambah baik uh, kempen seperti ini sentiasa kita adakan. According to the Royal Malaysia Police PDRM statistics, there have been 140 fatal accidents recorded as of Thursday. Op Selamat Limablas was launched on May 29th. Selangor recorded the highest road fatalities with 22 cases recorded, followed by Johor 19, Kedah 15, Perak 14 and Sarawak 12 cases. Meanwhile, another 19 people lost their lives on the roads on the second day of Idil Fitri. Police said the total number of fatalities now stood at 159 since the Op Selamat Limablas road safety operation was launched on May 29th. Johor topped the chart with five deaths, followed by Selangor with four cases, two each in Pahang, Trengganu and Sabah, and one in Kedah, Perak, Negeri Sembilan and Kelantan. A total of 20,903 vehicles were involved in road accidents over the last nine days. In a statement on Friday, police said 2,610 checks were conducted nationwide with 197,541 summonses issued for various offences. Op Selamat focuses on six major offences, namely driving in the emergency lane, overtaking on a double line, using mobile phones while driving, queue jumping, speeding and disregarding the traffic lights. As for buildings and house break-ins, there were 380 cases recorded in the country during the operation, which will end on June 12. Malaysia's export data for April, which recorded a positive growth of 1.1% to 85.2 billion ringgit, is an indication of early signs of a robust second quarter GDP growth. Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng said so far Malaysia had benefited from the trade war between the world's two largest economies, China and the US, in the form of trade diversion and business relocation. He also revealed that a Japanese financial institution, Nomura, recently identified Malaysia as the fourth biggest beneficiary of trade diversion after Vietnam, Taiwan and Chile. Imports, meanwhile, recorded a 4.4% year-on-year rise in April to 74.3 billion ringgit, which reflects strong domestic demand that aligns with a healthy second-quarter growth. 
For the period under review, total trade rose to 159.5 billion ringgit in April from 155.5 billion recorded in the same period last year. Lim said April imports for consumption goods rose by 18.9% year-on-year after rising at an already strong rate of 10.5% in March, while imports for intermediate goods ballooned by 20.3%. Apart from trade diversion resulting in rising exports, Lim said Malaysia will likely benefit from investment diversion that arises from the reconfiguration of the global supply chain. He said the diversion is already reflected in approved foreign direct investment, increasing by 48% in 2018 to 80.5 billion ringgit from 54.4 billion registered in 2017. The Malaysian government is not incurring any cost in the acquisition of 12 surveillance drones worth almost 80, billion ringgit, 80 million ringgit from the United States. According to the Defense Ministry, the cost was borne by the U.S. as part of its Maritime Security Initiative, or MSI, program. The ministry in a statement on Friday said the MSI program provides assistance in terms of capability of the assets and training capacity to countries including Malaysia to help increase the maritime domain awareness in Southeast Asia. It said the program is funded entirely by the US and the Malaysian government is not incurring any cost. It added the Royal Malaysian Navy will receive the assets in stages beginning 2019 to 2022, where the first batch of six Scan Eagle Unmanned Aerial Vehicle, or UAV, is expected to be accepted in mid-November. It also said that apart from the Malaysian Armed Forces, other enforcement agencies would also benefit from the MSI program to enhance maritime surveillance and sharing of information among enforcement agencies. It was reported that the purchasing of the drones worth 79.03 million ringgit from the United States was a move seen as part of President Donald Trump's effort to boost its allies' intelligence-gathering capabilities amid the rising tension with China. The Scan Eagle is an unarmed drone manufactured by Boeing's Institute, which also makes the RQ-21A Blackjack the armed drone used by the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps. The ministry also said it purchased two maritime patrol aircraft, MPA, and three medium-altitude long-endurance unmanned airborne system under the 12th Malaysia Plan. The public have the right to criticise or question her appointment as the graft bastard's head. Newly minted Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC Chief Commissioner Latifa Koya, who clocked in for her first day at work on Friday, said while everyone is entitled to their opinion, her role is clear to uproot corruption in the country. In a statement on Friday, Latifa said the public and the anti-graft agency should come together to transform Malaysia into a corruption-free nation. The former PKR member and Lawyers for Liberty Executive Director said she would be looking into long-term measures, including education, to create a culture of intolerance to corruption. On Tuesday, the Prime Minister's office unexpectedly announced Latifa as the new MACC chief, effective June 1st, sparking a robust debate among Malaysians, including politicians. A day later, Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad confirmed he made the decision unilaterally and did not consult his cabinet as he did not want to be bound by their views. He also reportedly said that Latifa was selected due to her strong character, where she sticks to the truth. Meanwhile, PKR President Datu Sri Anwar Ibrahim said Tun Dr. Mahade needs to clarify the appointment of Latifa as the new MACC Chief Commissioner at the proper forums. He said the decision to appoint Latifa was made by the Prime Minister and that he only knew about it from the announcement on the appointment. As far as my position is concerned, now that uh, we have uh, agreed to give the space and support Prime Minister Mahathir, now that he has given, uh, uh, has made the decision, uh, we should only use the uh, proper forum, uh, the cabinet or the Pakatan Council, Pakatan Leadership Council, if we want to raise and seek further clarification. But of course, clarification is required 
because this is what we promised and we cannot be seen or perceived to be reneging on our commitment uh, but uh, we should not uh, conform to any conclusion before listening uh, and, and allow, uh, giving the opportunity to PM Tun Mahathir to explain. He said matters needed clarification, including why the cabinet was not informed and that the appointment was allegedly not in line with the MACC Act and also violated the Pakatan Harapan election manifesto. Asked about Latifa's resignation from PKR, Datu Sri Anwar said her withdrawal had been accepted by the party, which should not become an issue. He was speaking to reporters after attending a Hari Raya dinner at Masjid Kubang Semang in Permatang Pau, Pulau Pinang. Also present were Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Aziza Wan Ismail and Pulau Pinang Deputy Chief Minister Wan Datuk Ahmad Zakiuddin Abdul Rahman. For Home Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin, the appointment of Latifa Koya as the new Chief Commissioner of the MACC should not be questioned by anyone because it was done according to procedures. He said the procedure observed included in terms of the constitution and executive power. Saya tak fikir wajar kalau pihak-pihak soal dan menikaikan. Pasal dia prosedurnya semua betul. Dari segi perlembagaan, dari segi kuasa eksekutif, untuk menaik itu semua betul. Cuma yang terbangkit sekarang ini soal politik. Tan Sri Mohidin said this to the media after attending the Pago Parliamentary Constituency Ideal Fitri celebrations at Dewan Orang Ramai Felda Sri Ledang in Pago on Friday. He welcomed the appointment but hoped that in future there would be prior discussions among the Pakatan Harapan leadership to ensure that they understood the rationale for such appointments. He said that this is so that it is in line with what PH spelt out in the manifesto. Latifa's appointment for a two-year term effective June 1st was announced three days ago after it had received the consent of the Yang de Pritwan Agong. Latifa replaces Datu Sri Muhammad Shukri Abdul, who decided to shorten his service contract. In Selangor, the raw water treatment process in Sungai Langat Water Treatment Plant, which was affected following a mechanical filtering equipment issue on Thursday, has resumed operations. Pengurusan Air Selangor Sindram Berhad said efforts are underway to stabilize water pressure and flow in the distribution system to expedite supply restoration. In a statement on Friday, its Customer Relationship and Communication Department head, Abdul Rauf Ahmad, said water supplies in most of the previously affected areas have been restored. Meanwhile, other affected areas in Kuala Lumpur and Hululangat in Selangor have recorded a restoration rate of 89% and 65% respectively, and water tankers will continue to be mobilized to the affected areas. The Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Ministry will investigate allegations on social media about a faulty diesel dispensing diesel pump. On June 5th, a 27-second long video uploaded by Facebook user Vince Ling went viral, claiming that no fuel was being dispensed after pressing the trigger on the nozzle. However, the reading on the pump meter showed otherwise. In the comments section, other Facebook account users said that a petrol station from the same company was having similar problems in Bumban Jasin. When we return, further enhancement but lower price. Find out more when we come back. And we're back this time with the auto segment. Several enhancements, but the price is lower than its predecessor. It sounds rather impossible, but Proton made it possible through its newly facelifted 2019 Exora RC. Sabrina Zaino went to find out more on the changes that Proton has installed for the MPV. Welcome back to another episode of Hot on Wheels Nightline's Auto Segment. I'm Sabrina Zainal and today I'm at Proton Center of Excellence where Proton just launched the 2019 Exora. Now it's been 10 years since its first launch and now it's back with some bigger enhancements, the main thing being connectivity. So let's take a closer look. 
But first, let's see what's installed under the hood. Not much of a change in terms of the engine as this Exora RC is powered by the familiar 1.6-liter Campro turbocharged engine. It generates 140 PS and 205 newton meters of torque from 2,000 to 4,000 RPM paired with a CVT. Other under-the-skin improvements are improved suspension tuning and engine mounts for lower noise, vibration and harshness of NVH. Right, so sitting inside, um, I can feel it's very spacious, so Proton did deliver on the promise of making this a lot more um, spacious, which means more uh, legroom in all rows, front, middle and back. And, okay, the main highlight though is the connectivity, which is the 7-inch infotainment unit head, which is the same in the X70. So it has the high Proton feature and all the other uh, features in this intelligent system. Um, and because of that, this makes the Exora the first talking MPV in Malaysia. The Exora is available in two variants, the Executive at 59,800 ringgit and the Premium for 66,800 ringgit, a 2,208 ringgit and 2,547 ringgit reduction in price respectively compared to its predecessor. On the safety kit front, Proton has installed two airbags, ABS and EBD for this Exora RC. The premium model comes with leather steering, driver's vanity mirror, reverse camera and 7-inch high Proton head unit among others. Uh, indeed, uh, Exora has, has grown by leaps and brown, bounds since 2009. It has gone through a lot of changes, not just cosmetic but engineering as well. And we have done uh, changes to, uh, for the 2019 version. Uh, some uh, new additions on for aesthetics, uh, exterior, new body color, uh, new rims, uh, shock pin antenna, which gives the connectivity part of it. The tuning on the right handling, for example, is much better than previous uh, Exorans. Yeah? It's more refined right now. Uh, it, it's more engineering changed, yeah? but definitely uh, relating to comfort and convenience for the customer. While the improvements are welcome, the biggest news is the price reduction and packages that come with this Exora RC. The national car maker is throwing in a service package with three times free labor service and free one gigabyte of data for five years. There is also a special insurance coverage package and low interest rates. On top of that, those buying the Exora before December 31st this year will get five years of free labor service and the first 1,000 buyers get a bonus of two years free road tax. Sabrina Zainal for Nightline's Auto Segment. When Nightline returns, at least 25 injured after explosion in Sweden. Details next. On to the foreign front now. In Sweden, a powerful explosion in the southern town of Linköping damaged buildings and injured at least 25 people on Friday. The blast occurred at about 7 a.m. local time. Detectives have launched a criminal investigation and a bomb squad was deployed as a precaution following the blast, which blew out dozens of windows and destroyed balconies. Police said the explosion was believed to have occurred outside the five-story building and four-story building that were damaged. The police also cordoned off a large area of several blocks around the scene. The cause of the explosion has not been identified. In the United Kingdom, Prime Minister Theresa May announced her stepping down as the Conservative Party leader on Friday. However, she will remain as the PM and carry on her official duties until a successor is elected. The contest for the Conservative leadership will formally begin a week after on June 10th. According to the Conservative Party rules, members must shortlist two candidates to be presented to the country for a final choice. 
candidates are to be decided through a series of ballots and is expected to narrow down to just two by June 20th. Ultimately, the final two will go through to a postal ballot of about 160,000 party members around the country, with the result currently expected at the end of July. Coming up in sport, Malaysia thrashed Timor Leste 7 1. Stay tuned. Sports football, the 2022 World Cup qualifiers. Malaysia put on an amazing performance as they crushed Timor Leste 7 1 in the first leg of their first round match on Friday. The national side opened the scoring through Corbin Ong's header on the 12th minute before Sharil Fikri netted a second in the 23rd minute. No Shahru Idlan then scored another on the 43rd minute and Safawi Rashid gave a comfortable four-goal advantage to the national side just before the break. A single goal from Yao Pedro da Silva Freitas was scant consolation for Timor Leste, which was overwhelmed by Safawi's second goal of the match seven minutes later. Mohamed Faiz Nasir scored the sixth goal for Malaysia in the 70th minute before Akia Rashid wrapped up the five-star performance with another goal just before the final whistle, sealing an emphatic 7-1 win. A ruckus broke out at the Satok Ramadan Bazaar in Sarawak on Hari Raya Eve when firecrackers were let off in the crowd. Footage of the incident has gone viral on social media, showing people running and shouting at the scene. Kuching Police Chief Assistant Commissioner Awang Din Awangani said a police report had been lodged by a victim who was punched by a group of men. Visuals of the ruckus wrap up this edition of Nightline. I'm Raymond Goh. Thank you for your company. Take care and Salamat Hari Raya, Ideal Fitri.